What's up guys, I wanted to show you guys this Ocatel P1000 Plus portable power station. I feel like this brand is kind of a maybe less known brand. So I wanted to just give you guys a full breakdown in case you're thinking about getting it. I'll show you guys some tests, me using an action to see you know, how this thing really performs and then I'll give you guys my review at the end. There are some really cool features that this thing has that maybe some other power stations don't have. So let's get in the video. All right, so here it is up close so you guys can see. As far as the battery composition of this battery, it is an LFP battery or lithium iron phosphate battery, Life EP04, which is a really nice battery. That's the batteries that all the you know big brands use nowadays because they're really reliable and they usually last a super long time and they're usually really safe as well. This company, Ocatel, claims that this actually has up to 4,000 plus battery life cycles. So if you were to use this thing every single day, it would, it would last longer than 10 years, which is pretty awesome. You know, most of us don't aren't gonna be using a power station every single day and so it should actually last far past 10 years as well but 10 years is a long time pretty awesome the battery capacity of this is 1024 watts so pretty good size it's going to be that size that that is good to to power a lot of your basic items in your house like you know tvs refrigerators things like that and then definitely you know your smaller devices like phones laptops and things like that so really good for camping and really good for you know just portable backup power on the go or even in your house for portable items like CPAP machines, um, you know, refrigerators, like I said, and TVs. As far as the max output that this has, it has a max output of 1800 watts and it can peak up to 3600 watts, which is pretty impressive, um, you know, to be able to peak that high. I'm not sure how accurate that is. You wouldn't really, you shouldn't really need to peak that high anyways, because usually it's only for a couple seconds. But if you had a device like a big refrigerator that maybe needed a really high surge up to 3000 watts, uh, but then could maintain less than 1800 watts, then this would be a really good option for that. You know, a lot of power stations that are in the 1000 watt range battery capacity usually have a surge of like in the 2000s, maybe 2700, but this one to have 3600 watts, I mean, that is a lot. That's, that's a higher peak than I've seen on other power stations, which is pretty impressive. However, I'm not really sure when you would need to use a surge that high. So I don't really know if that's really relevant for a power station in this size anyways. But talking about the front right here, one thing that is really nice about this is that all of the you know inputs and things are on the front, which is super nice. The only thing that's on the side is actually you know your charging ports, which I'll go over here in a second. But everything else is on the front, which I think is super nice. You know, some other power stations out there, they'll have some you know AC power on the front and then some on the back or the sides. This one has pretty much everything on the front, which I think is super nice. And they all have covers as well. So you know, if you are gonna be using this camping in the outdoors and there's you know, it's gonna get dirty. It is nice that they actually have covers because most power stations out there don't have covers for all of them. And I think that is a really cool feature that they actually had here or they added here. As you can see right here, you have four AC outlets. So you just gotta pull off the covers and they're all 20 amp max, but they have the maximum output of 1800 watts they can put out. And as you can see, they have those surge protection outlets as well, which is super nice. So you have four of those. And then up here you have two USB-C's. One of them is a 20 watt USB-C and one of them is a 100 watt USB-C. So one's fast charging, one's not. That is really nice that they have two USB-C's. You know, I know a lot of power stations out there have like three USB-A's and then only one USB-C, but they have two, which is nice. I think everything is going to pretty much USB-C now. So it's nice that they have two of them. And then over here we have two 18 watt USB-A's as well, which is also nice. So in total, that's eight different outlets right there that you can plug in. And then right here, you also have the 12 volt 10 amp um, DC car charger as well. And then up here you even have these ports, 12 volt 3 amp DC ports as well. The screen here is pretty nice. It's a pretty big screen, nice display. You can see you're charging right now. It's at 29%. You can see how many hours this will last. You know, if you don't plug anything into it, right now there's nothing into it. So it says 90, 99 hours. You also have your input and your output right here. So once you plug something in here, it'll show you how much it's outputting and then when you're charging it'll show you how much it's inputting and this will all update when you plug things in which i'll show you guys here in a second once we do our tests but over here turn it on you got your power button and then you have your ac and dc power so if you want to plug in here you got to click the ac power the light will turn on and then that's how you know that you can start plugging things in here and as you guys can see this little uh icon will pop up and it'll show you guys that the ac power is on when you click dc power as well, another icon will come up, the DC power, and that's how you know that you can start plugging into the DC power. And then down below, we also have a light, which is pretty cool. If you click it, it'll turn on. If you click it again, it'll do like a SOS mode. If you click it again, it'll do a slower SOS mode. 
and then if you click it again, it'll turn off. So pretty cool that it has a couple of different modes and really cool feature that they have, you know, just a little flashlight there. If you are camping and it's nighttime and you need to see things a little bit better, you want to see your outlets, you know, while you're plugging things in, that's a really cool feature to have. I like that it's on the front, you know, next to these outlets, you know, so that way you can actually see the outlets when it's dark outside. And then going over here on the side, we have our outlet ports right here. One thing that's nice about this power station, kind of like a lot of power stations now, is that you can actually charge this up via an outlet. You can charge it up with solar panels, or you can actually charge it up with your car as well. So as you can see, you have the labels right here. And once again, it has a little cover over it too, which is super nice. Really nice that they, ha that ha that they have those included. Um, right here, as you can see, this is where you plug it in to charge it. And it also has overload protection on here as well, which is nice. And as you guys can see, it actually has it labeled, but this has 1200 watts of max input. So you can charge this up pretty fast. You can put a lot of output in there at one time, 1200 watts. And something that's actually really cool about this power station is there actually is a couple different charging modes as well. So you can actually adjust through the app of Ocotel. You can adjust what charging method you want to use. You can choose to input 400 watts, 800 watts, 1200 watts, or 1800 watts because you can actually charge it up with solar and AC power at the same time and get up to 1800 watts. And when you do that, you're going to be able to charge it up in about 1.35 hours. So pretty fast, you know, you know, I've seen other power stations where you can charge it in like an hour, 15 minutes, and that's pretty close to this. You know, you can have 1800 watts of input, pretty awesome. But yeah, this is where you plug in the solar panel or the car charger as well. And then you can actually switch on and off right here. You can do quick charging or slow charging. It is better for the battery to do slow charging, but if you want to do that fast charging and charge this thing up a lot faster, you know, using that 1200 watt max, you can actually click this up or click this down and do that quick charging mode. If you want to be, you know, more cautious for your, for your battery, um, you can do the slow charging mode and then it's going to be better for your battery long term. But pretty awesome that they have those different modes because a lot of power stations don't have that. You know, you just have the regular charging method, but this actually allows you, if you want, you can do AC power and solar at the same time and get up to 1800 watts of uh, charging, which is pretty sweet. And by the way, I didn't actually mention, but the solar input is up to 500 watts of solar input, which is really good. You know, you're going to be able to charge it fast just with solar alone. Um, you should be able to charge it in like, I think it should be like three and a half hours, something like that with solar. So, you know, depending on your sunlight and stuff like that, or you could do, you know, both at the same time uh, to make it a little bit faster. I know a lot of other power stations out there, you know, all the top brands basically have 500 watts of solar input. So that's pretty awesome to see that on this. And that's pretty much it as far as, you know, what's around the power station. On the back, you have some of your specs. And on the side, you just have your vents over here on this side. Um, but then another cool thing is it actually has this handle right here as well. So it makes it a lot easier to carry it around, um, which is pretty cool. And then when you're not using it, you can just fold it down. So it still has that sleek design. It's got a flat top. So that way, you know, you could put your things that you're charging on top, um, you know, like your phone or laptop, things like that. All right, now before we do the test, one other thing I wanted to mention is that this does have pass-through power or UPS, and so you can actually charge this up and use it at the same time, and that'll actually be our first test, but pretty cool. So if the power were to go out, you know, you could have this thing plugged into the wall and be charging up, and then once the power went out or run out, it'll directly, boom, this just kicks on. Um, this still kicks on and it has 10 millisecond UPS. So you wouldn't even notice like the lights flicker or anything like that. You know, it would just be able to start pulling from the power station. So that way you don't really have to worry, you know, if the power were to go out, which is really, really nice. You know, if you are on like a breathing machine and stuff like that, and you want to make sure that, that thing runs throughout the night, then that UPS feature is really good for that. All right. So just so you guys can see that I want to do the first test, which is that pass through power right now. I have the power station actually being charged. As you can see right now, we're getting about, I have it on the slow charging mode. So we're getting about 500 Watts of input right here. And I want to show you guys that it can do pass through charging or have that UPS feature. And so right here, you'll see, I'm going to plug in my tablet. Actually, I got to turn on actually the AC power is on. So I'm going to plug this in boom. And as you guys can see, my tablet is charging. And as you can see right here, it's pulling um, 11 watts, 17 watts of output. And so it's, as you guys can see, it's it's charging, you know, it's, I'm able to use the power station and charge it at the same time, which is pretty awesome because that's going to, you know, if you did have solar panels plugged into this thing, um, you know, and you were camping or something like that, you could actually be charging the power station up and using it at the same time, which would be able to basically make your power station last a little bit longer than it would without that. So the UPS feature works. That's good to know. Glad to see that. And as you guys can see, it kind of updates everything on the screen right here. So I'm actually going to unplug it now. I'm going to unplug this now. Boom. 
and as you guys can see it is still charging it's still charging still has you know that 13 watts of output and as you guys can see everything updated now too so now it says it's able to charge this tablet as it's going 13 13 watts for seven hours and you know that's because there's only 30 percent battery but yeah everything updates you know pretty much right when you unplug it updates super quick that's really cool to see actually as well how fast that was able to update all right and then for this next test this is a pretty easy test as well just because it's the first test but i want to show you guys how this can power multiple items at once so right now i actually have you know my tablet being charged you can see right here being charged i have this computer plugged in which it only turns on when it's plugged in so it's on right now i have this little action cam right here being charged and i have this phone being charged via the type c as well so all four of these are being charged at once as you can see 65 watts of output and ac power dc power is on and it's able to charge four devices at once so this is definitely an easy test for it because it has up to 1800 watts of output or of max output and this is only 65 watts so not even close to being that maximum but just wanted to show you guys really good you know if you were camping or and you had like a drone or an action camera different cameras and stuff like that and you wanted to charge your devices this is a great thing to have because you know look at you can do it all at once and you know even with 30 percent battery you're able to power this for two hours just like it is which is pretty awesome all right so for this test i want to show you guys a full-size refrigerator so i have a two-sided refrigerator here that uses about 100 watts continuously something like that when the compressor's on and so i have it plugged in right here i'm going to turn on this ac power and we'll see if it can power it's going to probably take a second um, we'll see what happens though. All right, so it looks like it's using about 133 watts of output. Now it's going back down because the compressor is not actually on just because the refrigerator is already cool enough. But as we can see over here, when we open up the fridge, it goes up. It goes up a little bit to about 13 watts. And as we can see, the lights are on. And so this can in fact power a full-size refrigerator right now i'm going to try to wait i'm going to wait it out until that compressor turns on again that way we can see you know it'll tell you how long basically we have because right now it says 99 hours just because the compressor's not on once it turns on though i'll show you guys what it updates to be all right so i wait a couple minutes and the compressor actually turned on as you can see it's outputting about 78 watts and you're going to be able to run this refrigerator for about nine hours at least that's what it says but pretty awesome nine hours for this refrigerator and it is charging it no problem at all the thing about refrigerators they need that boost initially and that's why this thing has has a pretty high surge so it's good to be able to handle that and then now it's able to keep that 78 watts of output good and it's going to be able to power this thing for nine hours which pretty awesome for a portable power station like this nine hours that's a pretty long time so pretty awesome all right now for this next test i always like to test out a toaster and kind of like a heating griddle because they use a lot of power just to see how well this thing does with it so i'm going to plug in the toaster first and we're going to see it should have no problem with at least one side of it um, because it only uses about a thousand watts so i have it plugged in let's see is the ac power on it's on let's turn on one of these boom and we'll see as you guys can see it's using about it looks like it keeps going up it's using about 760 watts so it has no problem running that at all now i'm going to see i'm going to use one more see what happens and now we're at 1,472, 1,500, 1,500, and look at that, guys. I'm going to wait like 10 seconds just so you guys can see that it's able to actually run it and not just a fluke or anything like that. As you guys can see, 1,527 it is able to run it with no problem, which is pretty awesome. Now I'm going to do the griddle. I'm going to plug it in as well without the toaster um, just because this one uses quite a bit more power. So I'll plug this in right here. And I just plugged it in. As you can see, the light instantly turned on. And this is using about 1,100 watts. It's able to power it no problem as well. You can feel that heat starting to heat up a little bit. And now I'm going to plug in the toaster too. And see what happens. I'm going to do one side of the toaster. And it should be a little bit probably above that 1,800 watts. So do this. Oh. And as you can see it had that overload protection actually. So it was actually above that 1800 watts. So instantly, as you guys can see, this thing actually raised up and it wasn't able to handle it and it actually ended up turning this off as well. So that's actually pretty cool to see. There's that overload protection. If it has continuous 
you know, output like that and it goes over the 1800, it's going to automatically turn off. So pretty cool that it has that overload protection. But as you guys can see, it can power the toaster no problem, you know, the, the cooktop no problem. But if you put both of them at the same time and it goes over the 1800 watts, it's not going to be able to handle it. So pretty cool test right there. And I'm really impressed with it, honestly. That was, that was awesome that it's able to power that. You know, so this is gonna be really good if you are camping and you know, you wanna bring like a little heating device like this for your food and stuff like that, you totally can with this, which is pretty awesome. And I just turned it on again, just so you guys can see, I wanted to show you guys, update it. So right now, if you're running this heater right here, you can run it for about 43 minutes, which is, you know, a great amount of time to cook. I feel like you wouldn't really need, if you already have it prepared, you're cooking here while you're camping, 43 minutes, definitely enough time to be able to cook stuff. Pretty awesome. All right, guys, now I just want to do this next test. You know, how long can this power a TV or, you know, can it run it? This is a 55 inch TV, but this could also be kind of compared to like a projector. Projector, I think obviously uses way less power than a TV would. But if you were camping, you want to use a projector. Pretty awesome. So the AC power is on, it's plugged in. Let's go like this, boom. And there we go. The TV is on. See how many watts it's pulling. Looks like it's pulling about 45 watts right now. And about 58, it's going up right now so yeah about 58 watts and it looks like it's going to be able to power that for about 10 hours so pretty awesome you know you could definitely watch a lot of movies on this thing if you were camping using a projector this would be able to handle it no problem and obviously that kind of can change with your the type of tv that you have it might be using more watts you know depending on the tv you have but can definitely power a tv no problem pretty awesome you know 10 or 11 kind of hours around there so pretty awesome all right, so I hope that can kind of help you guys see, you know, what this thing can do. As far as my review goes, I think this is an awesome power station. You know, it, it basically was able to do all the tests that it talked about. You know, the, the AC output, max output was there. Um, once it got past that, it had that emergency shutoff, which is nice too, that safety protection, which I like about it. I do like how it has its handle here. And I do like how it has the covers, actually. I think that's a really cool, you know, little added piece uh, that, that makes it nice. You know, if you are camping and bringing it outside, um, you're not going to get a lot of dirt in there and stuff because of those protectors on there, which a lot of power stations don't have. I will say that kind of the build quality of it, you know, it is kind of the whole frame is a little bit like plastic material and it doesn't seem, you know, maybe as durable as some of the other high end power stations out there in this range. But as far as the performance goes, I think it's awesome. It works great. I like how it has that light too, you know, for camping as well. And it's like right next to the outlet so you can see at night and stuff like that. So I think it's great. You know, I think it's an awesome power station. If you guys are looking for a power station in this range, like the 1000 watt range and a little bit higher, definitely recommend checking this out. It's a great option in my opinion.